So coming up next, we have um, Camilla Maya. Uh, she has been coding professionally since 2012, mostly with the Ruby and Python programming languages in the web development. Uh, presently, uh, she's developing mainly with Python, uh, has passed through different business fields during her career, like computer science uh, or computing security, e-commerce, e-learning, and finally, and currently, logistics and supply chain. Backend is her uh, primary focus. So she's going to be talking to us about automated integration testing and live documentation for your API. Uh, documentation, is, we, we all hate writing docs, so I'm sure this will be very helpful to know. So yeah, let me, let's get started. First of all, I'm super glad to be here. Uh, you know, talking in the same track and the same day as Guido is like such an honor. It's like insane. So I'm I'm super glad to uh, to be here. My first Euro Python, first as a speaker, first and uh, not in the first at all. So yeah, and today we are going to talk about Scan API and automated integration testing and live documentation for API. Exactly. If you hate to write docs, this is, this is the point. So the motivation. So everything started when I, in a week, one, one, more or less one year ago, where I was working as firefighter in my company. Firefighter uh, in our company means that uh, we are the people that in the team desire to handle all bugs, all fires, all stuff. Then the other people from the team of the team can focus on the project. So I was there only like facing bugs during this whole week. And then, uh, okay, but then you're going to ask me, but fixing bugs, where, what, what are you talking about? Okay, so let's give some context. I work for, uh, I work at LoadSmart. It's a logistics company that tries to uh, make together companies that has, that have loads to, to be delivered with carriers that have trucks and all the, the equipment to deliver this load. Everything in the United States, so the company, it's, it's an American company, and I work remote for it. Okay, and uh, you already know, uh, I was working as firefighter at LoadSmart remotely, but who am I, yeah? So I am Brazilian backend developer, I, am, I have a Bachelor of Computer Information System, I'm coding uh, since 2010, I have mo mo the most of my experiences with Python and Ruby. I have three years of, of experience of Python. My, it's a baby in Python community. <laughs> I, I helped to organize events. Uh, so I, I helped to organize the first pajamas and then the organization of the second one. And I'm I'm an organizer of uh, AeroPython here uh, too. So I hope you are enjoying the conference. Okay, so you already know me already know my company and I was there working as firefighter. And the thing that I noticed that all the fires that I faced in that week, they were like, they have something in common. We have three kinds of different fight, uh, fires. So the first one was integration errors. So we have some clients, uh, service that we consume for tracking. So tra tracking the trucks and other stuff. And uh, we were facing some problems like uh, in this integration. So we were expecting uh, there to send some, some field and this field were missing or the, the field was with misinformation. And this communication was not super uh, uh, clear. Also, we were, uh, we were facing some problems with front end, front end receiving data from back end that was not expected, was in a different format, was some missing information there. Okay, so this was uh, the first kind of problem. The second, kind of problem was outdated documentation because you could say that, okay, but you don't have like a documentation. Why didn't you follow this documentation? The doc documentation when it's like manually, is, uh, it's hard to maintain. So a lot of time we have missing any points uh, or missing fields and endpoints or misinformation, uh, deprecated endpoints that are there, but shouldn't, fields that shouldn't be there, you know. So this, this was uh, the second kind of problem. And the third one was the uh, was the fact that it was really hard to recreate the scenarios. So let's suppose I was there as a firefighter and someone from operations uh, tells me, oh, this endpoint here is not working for production. I, can, I cannot like try to recreate the scenario in production. I cannot get that same scenario and test it myself because production. I have to recreate it in a development environment or something that is safe. And then I can debug it better. 
So I, I, I try to think here, like let's imagine that we have a company, uh, a flight company, and then we have an endpoint that is called, uh, that is used to reserve a seat. And then the operational team says, oh, this endpoint to reserve a seat is, is breaking in production, something's not wrong. And then the, the operation uh, and then the, the tech team will try like to recreate this scenario in another environment, okay? So then, okay, but if you have a seat idea and have to reserve, probably you need a flight before because you had to call an endpoint to, to get a flight before. Otherwise you cannot reserve a seat without a flight. And for this flight, you, have to, you need to have an airplane. Otherwise, we don't have a flight without an airplane. And the same for a passenger. If you want to reserve something, the passenger needs to reserve this. And uh, and if we have an airplane, but is this airplane available for this flight or not? So we have a lot of questions about a lot of difficulties to reproduce the same scenario that the operational team uh, tells us that is breaking. So it, I can, you can imagine like uh, we have a really complex, and this is uh, the that scenario at Lozmai, we have a really complex of chain of requests that depends one and another, and we want to recreate the scenario exactly in the middle. So this is super hard. So bringing all this, uh, this problem and the, this fires that we're facing in this week, uh, I started to try to put together and understand how we can like solve this or at least make it uh, a bit better. So from this, we created uh, the SCAN API. What is the proposal of it? Okay, so it's an open source framework. It's written in Python. Uh, and we, ha we have two goals with it. The first one is to provide a live documentation. Here it's live documentation, uh, you understand it better, but it's not the same as open API documentation. It, it has a different approach. Uh, they are complementary. And, uh, and the second, besides the documentation, we want to provide integration tests. So for anyone that uh, has mostly known uh, Pythonology can implement integration tests for, for the endpoints, for the endpoints for this API. Okay, so how does it work? Let's get started with uh, one example. Let's take an example, the Pokemon API, okay? So the Pokemon API, you can access it with this, uh, this URL. And let's check the first endpoint just uh, to make you use it with uh, the, the response of it. So I'm doing here HTTP, it could be like a curl or whatever, but it's an HTTP to the endpoint slash v2 slash Pokemon. So if I run this in my browser, let me grab the pointer here. If I run this in my, uh, in my terminal, then we are going to have the headers here. And afterwards we are going to have the response itself. So if we hit here now, it says that we have 964 Pokemons. The next URL for the pagination will be this one. The purpose is no, because it's the, the first page. The results will be like this, uh, this, uh, this list of the first one will be Bulbasaur with this uh, URL to access the details of the Bulbasaur, the second one, Evasaur, the third one, Venusaur, and so on. Okay, so this is the, end point, uh, this is the API, just to, to make you comfortable with, with it. So how, do, how does it work? First thing that we have, we have to do is installing, so Python, you're already expert on it, pip install, scan API. Afterwards, we have to create an API specification file. So an API YAML file, it could be also a JSON, but here we are going to present with YAML, with the specification. So the first keyword is API, and then we are going to start creating our endpoints. The first one is to uh, represent our whole API. So the name is Pokemon, Poke API. The path here is the base URL slash v2. Then we are going to have the endpoints. So the first endpoint uh, will be related with Pokemon. This name is only identifier. Then we are going to have the path, Pokemon. And uh, inside this endpoint, we are going to have in the, the request. So the request, we have the name list all. Uh, that means that we, are, we want to list all Pokemons from this API. And then we will use a method, HTTP method get, and the path will be only slash because it's the root. So we are going to concatenate here, and this will be the result. Okay, so, and the result will be v2 slash Pokemon slash, that's it. So, okay, how we can run it. So basically the one thing that we have to do is to call scan API because it's a, a command line interface. You call scan API and you pass the API specification YAML file. 
here we load, we, uh, we read, we make, in fact, the request, and then we write uh, the, the report, an HTML file. Here is the example of this, uh, this running process. So here you're going to have the endpoints, API, v2, slash Pokemon. The status code of the response is 200. Uh, all tests passed because we didn't implement any, so yeah, all good. And here is the test summary that we are going to talk more about uh, briefly. Okay, and if you want to see the details of this uh, endpoint, we can collapse it, and then we are going to see the request information. So here is the difference. Uh, Open API is more descriptive. So it says we should have this field, this field, this field is required, this is not, this should be an integer, the length of this field should be this and that. Here is not, not, not this, uh, this approach. The approach here is more like a reporting uh, about the request that was just made. So here you can see like live, real time, uh, information about the request. So the user agent that was used in the readers of the request, the, we have also here a curl command that you can like just copy and paste in our terminal and then you can reproduce exactly the same way uh, the request that uh, Scan API just made. And here you have the response details, response, status codes, response time, if it was a redirect or not, headers for the response. And here, for example, the content. So here, if you see, it's exactly the same content that I was showing the HTTP uh, command before. So first Bulbasaur, and then we have Evasaur, and so on. And here, the tests. Uh, we have, since we have no tests, no information here. Okay, we, we talked about uh, documentation. Let's try to understand a bit about the integration tests. So let's get the same request here, okay? And then we have the same stuff, but now we are going to implement tests. I suppose we want to implement uh, the test that checks the status code is 200. So the only thing that we need to do is use this syntax. Everything inside this syntax is uh, interpreted as Python code. So here we can get response.statuscode equals 200. It's going to be to do this assert. If you want, for example, to ensure that our response will be fast enough, we can make uh, another assert to get the lapse of total seconds and then compare it with the time threshold that you want, like for example, uh, half a second. Also, if you remember the, the request here, that we, the response of the request, we have here a count and X and everything here. So let's suppose for a silly for a serial reason, reason to know that we want to ensure that every time the count will be the same. So we can grab here response, then we turn the response into, into JSON, then we get the count key, we, uh, the count value with the key here, and then we compare that will be always the same. And then you might uh, asking yourself, how can I do, uh, how can I know what this response object can do? This response object can do everything that a response object from the lib requests can do. So this, this object is a request object from the lib requests. It's a response object from the lib requests. So if you want to see everything that uh, this object can do, you only have to check the, the documentation and see the, the response class. Okay, and if you run it again, the same command scan API and with uh, the API specification, then we are going to have the tests here, passed, so we implemented three tests, all passed, we have here uh, the summary saying that three passed, no failures, no errors, and the total time for uh, this script to run. Okay, and uh, now if you remember, it's, it's still missing one part to be solved, uh, thinking about the, the problems that I brought in this beginning of this talk. So the chaining requests, how are you going to do that? How are you going to solve? So let's suppose now that we are going to get, we, that we want to get the details of, of a specific Pokemon. So in this case, every time that we hit the endpoint slash Pokemon, the list that will be returned will be the same, like first Bulbasaur, second uh, Ivasaur, and so on. But the most of case, the, this list is not static. This, this list changes. For example, if you try to get the flights during a period of time, I don't know, the flights between tomorrow and, and the next weekend, um, they will, do you, you will not be able to know the flight ID of the first uh, item, the flight ID of the second item, because this will change a lot because it's dynamic. So, so in this context, we are using this static one just to make it simpler. But keep in mind that this feature is super good when it's 
when this changes. So, okay, the, the thing that we want to achieve here is to get dynamically uh, these endpoints, to hit dynamically these endpoints, not static. Okay, so how can we do that? Okay, let's go again with the request. So here is exactly the same stuff that we have done before. We have tests here that for this example doesn't matter. Uh, but here is the, dif the, the different thing. We can store information inside the variables. So here, let's grab the Pokemon name. So response.json, then we get the results. We have the results here, and then we grab the first element, this element here, and then we grab the name of it, Bulbasaur. So now we are storing this information here is in this variable. And if you want to use this in the next request, it will be available. So now I can create a new request that is details, and then uh, the, the method will be keeping being get. But now I have the path that is Pokemon uh, that uses this variable that was assigned before. So concatenated it, we are going to hit the endpoint Pokemon slash Pokemon name, but with the variable uh, with the variable value. So let's see how it should like. So now we are going to have the first one that is slash Pokemon, and then we are going to have the second one that is slash Bulbasaur. So we, we could grab the information for a second request dynamically without putting like hard-coded Bulbasaur there. Okay, and how can I add Scan API to my project? Here I'm going to show you how we add the Scan API uh, pro uh, to our project as LoadSmart, but uh, since it's a CLI, so you can, you can do the, the way you prefer, like, but this is the way that we introduced it in LoadSmart, okay? Uh, but this is like for, for every step, you, you, always be, you always need to do that. So you need to have specification file and a config file. This is a config file just to set like some information, for example, the project name or to show in the report or just a configuration file. And here the specification file. Okay, so in your project, you create a new folder that's called scan API, and then it will contain these two files. And what we do, we do, we, we make this integrated with our uh, continuous integration pipeline. So every time that we have our uh, API on master and deployed on stage, we uh, hit the endpoints on staging using scan API. Why we don't do that in the production? Because this is an integration test, so it will interact directly with the database. We are going, in fact, to hit the endpoints. So we, we cannot do that in production. So the thing that we do, we, we do this after they deploy on staging and the report, we store in the Circle CI artifacts. So everyone uh, can access it directly. So, so here it, so, so here is how it uh, looks like the configuration file for Circle CI. So uh, we use uh, image, Docker image, and then we have like the steps to run the CLI, CLI, and then we do the jobs. And we only do it after the push uh, on, on stage. Okay, we have much more things like we have language independent, uh, this is cool because it's like language independent. So it doesn't matter if your API is in Python, it's Ruby, or it's implemented in Java. Uh, since we are going to really hit the API, it doesn't matter how it's like uh, cited. Uh, it also accepts JSON. We, we can use environment variables because, uh, for example, if you want to use a secret key, you are not going to use to put it inside your GitHub project or your uh, version codes. So for that, we also have the the, in the configuration file, you can set which information you want to hide in the report to not to have to show you to show uh, a secret key or something like this. Uh, we also have multiple file API specification because this specification could uh, be really big, so you can split it. It and yeah, we have custom templates. If you didn't like the template that we offer to you, that is with this scan API logo and other stuff, you can implement one showing the, the things that you prefer, just passing a Jinja template in the command line. Can I start in using it? For sure. Uh, we already uh, have a stable version. Uh, we released it last month, so it's all good. Uh, we are already using it at LoadSmart. 
We have an, uh, our website that is in, still working in progress, but we already have a lot of information that you can uh, check there to, uh, to use it. Next steps. We can, we can implement more HTTP methods. We can improve uh, our JSON visualization. We can have more docs, tutorials, improve our website, make it automation easier with GitHub Actions. But I think the best thing here that we can think as next steps, like what if we could integrate with open API, like running an open API specification, and then it's generating and it's collecting off the scan API. And, and I don't know, what if we could like integrate with uh, DRF, Django REST framework? So yeah, a lot of good steps. Why, why to contribute? We have a lot of different stuff to contribute. So backend, frontend, automation, design, we have a lot of different kinds of issue. It's for Python, so that's cool because we are not attached with any framework. Um, it's nice to understand how a lib works, so how to deploy and pip, how to do uh, all this uh, maintenance, uh, how, how to set up this lib. Uh, we have, we, we really care about uh, quality of code, so we have coverage, good coverage. We try to label the issues with good first issue and all, uh, all kind of these issues, uh, labels. Uh, we have a lot of help from the community. We try to uh, create ADRs there to discuss about design, uh, design implementations. We try to make it uh, super, uh, uh, trying to think together, not only one person. Uh, we are going to have a sprint session, uh, so NeuroPython. So yes, if you want to join, please just join this uh, channel on Discord and have all the information. It will be during the Saturday and the Sunday. So please join us. And if you are here, you like the idea, but you're not going to use it and you don't want to contribute anyway, you can at least uh, contribute to given us a uh, start there. So it's GitHub slash scan API slash scan API. And then you have the, we can, like we use this start to make it, it easier to, to share with information, like to get more uh, visibility. We have organization here for Scan API with our apples. We have the Twitter, Scan API underscore, so follow us there. We are not so popular there yet. 26 followers, mm. okay. And yeah, if you are interested about logistics, working for uh, LoadSmart, here is a direct link, your uh, QR code, join us, talk to me. Uh, come talk to me and thank you very much. I want to thank you first of all for you that join and listening, but for all the people from community that already helped us on API. This is super, uh, super cool project. I'm super uh, happy with it. This is my Twitter, see my CD, my GitHub, and here are the Discord channels to talk about it afterwards. So let's keep in, let's keep in touch. Thank you so much, Camilla. Thank you. Great talk. So um, let's see. We have we do have time for questions if anyone has any. Um, of course, the trick here is that my Zoom is not updating one of the two screens to show things. Okay. All right. So right now we actually don't have any open questions. Interestingly, so we'll hang out for a minute because okay. uh, if anyone has any questions, you know, uh, put them into the Q and A here on uh, on Zoom, or if you need to, put them in the Microsoft track. Uh, but you know what? If you don't get any, Camilla, my my uh, my professor in college used to say, if you don't get any questions after a talk, it just means you were a really really good presenter. I hope so. <laughs> ah, we do have one, so you don't have to go away empty handed. <laughs> Uh, we also have a comment. So I'm going to do the comment first and then the questions. The comment uh, is Keith said, I actually have a work project where this would be super useful. So. Awesome. I hope so. Uh, and then we have an anonymous question. How does scan API handle authentication flow? Okay, so authentication flow you can use with environment variables. So for example, if you're using a JWT token, you can pass it as an environment variable and then uh, it's all good. So every authentication that depends on sending information via requests with a secret keys uh, will be handled. Excellent. And I don't see any others. If anyone does want to chat, oh, I, hey, as soon as I say that, somebody <laughs> did post one, that's great. You know, also all I have to do is say there's nothing and then there's another one there. It's, it's me. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyway, that the original answer said thank you. Um, 
Someone else said, this may be completely explained on the website, haven't got a chance to check yet. Is there a timeline of things you guys are looking at implementing? The open API integration sounds rad. That's so, 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 so what's, what was the question? Sorry, let's see when we are intending to implement uh, the open API integration. M Michael asks, is there a timeline of things that you guys are looking at implementing? Uh, yes, I think for, first of all is the open API integration. And uh, yeah, first, because we are already like, do, uh, for the load smart, it's already working fine. So I, I think we need to listen more from community, what is missing and what is like, what people want more, so to understand. But the line of it, it's for sure like integrating with open API and probably something with uh, DRF or something to make it easier uh, to avoid people having to write the, the configuration by itself. All right. And uh, say so the magic words again, I don't see any more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. It does look like that's it. So if anyone does want to um, chat some more about this, um, there is a chat room uh, specifically for this. Um, so if you go to uh, talk-scan-api over on Discord, talk-scan-api, and you can chat more with Camilla over there. So uh, once again, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you very much.